Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Inspiration for today. I'm so glad you tuned in. So this week, for at least the remainder of the week, we're going to do a special thing. We did do it once before, but we thought it would be so appropriate to do it again this week. And that is, we're doing, Pastor Rick is in the middle of a series called uh, Time to Dream. And the sermons are outstanding. So for the rest of today and the rest of this week, we're going to let you see one of those sermons. And we've divided it in such a way that every day you and me are going to get very good uh, input for our lives. All we have to do is allow God to speak to us. So I'm going to be quiet, turn it off, and let you enjoy what God is saying through Pastor Rick Warren. See you tomorrow. You know, a lot of people dream, but they never do anything about it. Lots of people dream, but they don't ever go after their dreams. Why? Well, there are a lot of reasons. People are afraid. Uh, there are insecurities that keep us from going after our dreams. Last week, we talked about how our past can keep us stuck in the past and we can't get into the future. Uh, criticism, the fear of critics, can keep us from going after our dream. Uh, maybe you have a dream that would cause conflict with somebody. Uh, if achieving our dreams was easy, everybody would do it. But there's always a price to pay. And there's always work and there's always effort to see a dream realized. So today, as we're still getting into the early stages of how to dream and what to dream and where to dream and then what to do with the dream that God gives you, I want us to look at the struggle behind every dream so you know what you're getting into because there's always a struggle behind every dream. Ask Martin Luther King if there was a struggle behind his dream. He'll tell you yes. Ask Christopher Columbus if there was a struggle behind his dream. He'll tell you yes. Ask the pilgrims if there was a struggle in starting over in a brand new country, if that was tough. Yes, there's a struggle behind the dream. Now, God intentionally allows these struggles to happen in your life and in my life. Why? Well, because God is far more interested in what you become on earth than what you do on earth. Let me say that again. God is far more interested in what you become on earth that's your character, than what you do on earth. That's your contribution. God is more interested in the person you are becoming than your accomplishments. Why? Because you're not taking your accomplishments to heaven. The deeper purpose of a God-given dream that he gives you is what you end up becoming in the process of going after that dream. And you're not taking the, the end goal to heaven, but you are taking you. Now, a clear example of this in the Bible of the fact that there's a struggle behind every great dream. And in this series we're doing on Time to Dream, we're looking at what's God's dream for your life. And what's his dream for the next stage of your life? We're gonna look at the life of Jacob today. Jacob's an interesting fellow. He's a mixture of combination of, of good and bad, of uh, highs and lows, of strengths and weaknesses. Jacob ran from God his entire life, and he actually ran from his brother uh, his entire life. Uh, but one day, God made him stop running just long enough to give him a dream of a great blessing. But after God gave him that dream came a very severe struggle with four phases. And these are the exact same four phases that you're going to struggle with in getting ready for the dream that God has for your life. So first we learn of God's dream for Jacob's life. Verses 11 to 22 of Genesis 28 say this. When Jacob reached a certain place, he stopped for the night because the sun had set. He found a smooth stone for a pillow, and he laid down to sleep. Then God gave him a dream in which he saw a stairway going from earth to heaven. Now, you always thought Stairway to Heaven was a Led Zeppelin song. No, no, it actually came from, from this guy, from Jacob. He saw a stairway going from earth to heaven, and the angels of God were going up and down the stairs. Now, at the top of the stairway was God, who said, I am the same Lord 
of Abraham, your grandfather, and of Isaac, your father, and I'm going to give you, here's the dream, I'm going to give you and your descendants all the land on which you're sleeping. That's the nation of Israel. And your descendants will spread all around the world. That's the Jewish nation. And all the peoples on earth are going to be blessed by your future generations, by God's chosen people. Now, God promises in this dream, I'm going to be with you, and I'm going to watch over you wherever you go. But one day, I will bring your people back to this land. That actually became true. That prophecy was fulfilled in 1948 when the nation of Israel was established and Jews came back to the land in 1948. Now, when Jacob woke up, he thought, surely the Lord is in this place, and I wasn't even aware of it. Now, let me just pause here. How many times has the Lord been in a place and you weren't aware of it? How many times? It says, then he was afraid. And he said, this place is awesome. It's the house of God, the gateway to heaven. So early the next morning, Jacob got up and took the stone that he'd used for a pillow, and he stood it upright as a memorial marker, like a, like a pillar. And then he anointed the stone, stone with oil. This is a symbol of anointing. And he named the place Bethel, which means house of God. Anytime you've heard the word Bethel, it's, it's a combination, uh, uh, the Americanization of Bethel, which means house of God, just like Bethlehem means house of bread. Now, then Jacob made this vow to God. If you'll be with me, Jacob says, I will honor you with my life and I will give back to you a tenth of all that you give to me. That's the principle of tithing. It's taught many, many places in scripture, but Jacob is one of the early ones to say, I'm going to give you 10% back of everything you've given to me as an act of worship, as an act of gratitude, as an act of faith that I realize it all comes from you in the first place. Now, that's the exciting part of the story. God gives Jacob this dream. I'm going to build a great nation from your descendants. I'm going to give you this land. I'm going to be with you. I'm going to bless you. And Jacob says, you're going to be my God, and I'm going to serve you, and I will give you 10% back of everything that you bless me with. But Jacob was not ready for God's blessing at this point. And this is not the end of the story. Jacob was not prepared. Jacob was not ready. Jacob was not mature enough to handle the great blessing and the great dream that God had in store for him. So God has to prepare Jacob to receive the dream he has for Jacob. He has to prepare him. He has to get him ready to receive the God-given dream, which, by the way, so do you. God has to prepare you. You have to get ready to receive the dream that God has for your life in the next decade and in the years ahead. God will take you through the same four phases, the same four phases of the struggle that he took Jacob through in order to get you ready to be blessed and to be fulfilled in your God-given dream. I want to just warn you in advance, there will be a struggle that after God gives you the dream, the dream that God gave me of Saddleback Church has had many, many struggles over 40 years. There is no dream without a struggle. And th that struggle involves four different phases that God takes us through in order to build our character, to strengthen our faith, to build our patience and resilience, get us ready for his dream. The four phases of the struggle we go through for God's dream is in Genesis 32, a couple chapters later after Jacob's been given the dream. Now, the first phase in God's process of preparing us for the dream he has for us is what I call the crisis phase. You go, oh, great. We begin with the crisis. Yeah, sorry. Write this down. In the crisis phase, here's the first phase of struggle. I struggle with God and others. I struggle with God and others. Are you in a crisis right now? Congratulations. God's getting ready to give you a new dream for your life. 